So today we're doing something a little new. It's something I want to do a little more often. It's just like a weekly video where I just talk about the movies I saw that week. It could be recent movies, it could be old movies. Whatever I watched that week is fair game. So I saw four movies this week. Let's talk about them. Before we get started on the video, I just want to tell you guys, please comment below what movies have you seen this week. I'll be replying to your comments. We can discuss some movies that we watched this week. I really want to hear what you guys have to say. So first one I'm going to talk about is King Richard. This movie is being nominated for all of the Oscars and Will Smith is said to be the favorite to win the Oscar for Best Actor. It's not the kind of movie I really gravitate towards. It seemed like a very traditional Oscar type of movie. It's not really my cup of tea. It kind of looks like a sports movie. It kind of looks schmaltzy. If you guys saw my best of 2021 list, I said I wasn't going to watch King Richard because it's not really my cup of tea. I decided to watch it anyway because I want to watch the Oscars for once in my life. It's going to be the first time in a while. And I want to be like, in it. I want to see who are the best ones. So I watched King Richard and it wasn't as bad as I expected. I wouldn't say it's a great movie. I wouldn't say it's a good movie. I was just expecting much worse and the reason why I was expecting worse is because this movie is produced by Will Smith and I was like oh Jesus this is just gonna be a Will Smith vehicle for him to win the Oscar. A lot like that concussion movie that came out a few years ago. Not only that, but this movie was being produced by the, the Williams sisters. Whenever they make like a biopic and someone involved in the real story is producing it, it's usually a recipe for disaster. I think of Brian May producing Bohemian Rhapsody. This movie does have the shortcomings of both a Will Smith vehicle and a glossy biopic. But that said, it kind of redeemed itself for me in the final act, and I kind of lost track of the movie by the time that happened, I lost interest. This is a two and a half hour long movie as well, which didn't need to be that long. So anyway, for those of you who don't know the real story, it's about this guy called Richard. He's the dad of Venus and Serena Williams and he's very hard on his daughters because he really wants them to become professional tennis players. Yeah, the main problem I had with this movie was that it was very void of conflict in the first two acts of the movie. Just looking at the, the Williams sisters in the movie, they didn't lose a tennis game until well into the third act, which was a problem to me. And I'd only see them lo win or lose a tennis game to be invested but just some kind of conflict maybe if king richard maybe if he was a little hard on his daughter it's kind of like whiplash how jk simmons character was really hard on miles teller's character just some kind of conflict for me to get invested but there wasn't any of that conflict for like a solid portion of the movie which was very problematic to me i'm like give me some conflict what do these characters need to do what do these characters need to change in order to achieve their goals and that wasn't very clear. It really got interesting in the final portion of the movie where Will Smith's character starts doing decisions that aren't really the smartest decisions. And we find out it's because he's in fact kind of scared for his daughters because he had a rough time growing up because of the color of his skin. Once it got into that part of the movie, I thought it got a lot more interesting because at least there was some kind of conflict. But the beginning was just so void of conflict. The ending once it became a sports movie, that's when it became interesting to me. And the directing itself is very flat. It's not really interesting. The music is very dull and plain. As soon as this movie started and the music started playing and it's that overdone biopic music just like shit like that i was like oh god what am i getting myself into even there's a part in here that was really weird there's a part where will smith's character farts and the sound effect they used for a fart it was like the most generic sound effect you can ever hear and i'm like who went with that sound it's legit like the fart sound effect twitch streamers would use or something like that just like the brown like it sounded really fake <laughs> king richard not as bad as i thought it would be but still not very enjoyable watch it if you're interested in the story i guess if not not really required viewing in my opinion will smith does he deserve the oscar i think he did a good job in the movie no doubt about that 
The movie is basically a Will Smith vehicle, so you'd expect him to do a good job. He's not my favorite performance of the five nominated, but we'll get to that when I talk about The Tragedy of Macbeth. This was another movie from last year I didn't get to see because I missed its theatrical run, and I thought it was solid. It was a very solid movie. I'm not a big Shakespeare dude. It's hard for me to get into Shakespeare, but this had enough of the beautiful cinematography and the performances were absolutely amazing in this movie. It had that very A24 style to it and that was enough to keep me invested. Not only that, but I knew the story of Macbeth prior to watching this movie. I didn't need to whip out my Shakespeare translated books. If this is your introduction to Shakespeare, it might be a little difficult for you. But anyway, I thought this movie looked fantastic. It was act Denzel Washington in this movie. Fantastic job. This is directed by Joel Cohen, one of the Cohen brothers. The other Cohen brother is not in this one. It's not as much a Cohen brother movie as I thought. This really didn't feel like a Cohen brother movie. It, like I said, it felt a lot more like an A24 movie, if anything. If I didn't know this was directed by one of the Cohen brothers, I would have never guessed. Which is good because their last movie was the Netflix movie, Buster Scruggs. And I wasn't big into that one. And they kind of just went in a different direction here, and I feel like when directors do that, it's always for the best. So yeah, Tragedy of Macbeth. If you like Macbeth, if you like Shakespeare, give it a shot. If you don't like Shakespeare, this might be a little difficult for you. Story is a little hard to follow. They speak uh, Shakespeare. Don't say I didn't warn you. But overall, I think Denzel in this movie. Personally, I thought he did a way better job than Will Smith and King Richard. Will Smith and King Richard is gonna win the Oscar, but I think Denzel gave a better. The best performance of last year anyway was Simon Rex and Red Rocket, but he's not even nominated, so whatever. All right, I also watched The Gospel According to St. Matthew. The reason why I watched this movie is because it was directed by Pier Paolo Pasolini, who is known for directing the movie Salo, which is known on the internet for being one of the most disgusting movies ever. And I can confirm it is one of the most disgusting movies ever but a totally different direction. This is a Jesus movie directed by the guy who did Salo. Basically, you're following the story of Jesus from his birth all the way to his crucifixion. This movie kind of acts as like the highlights of the gospel according to St. Matthew. It's told in black and white in a very naturalistic way. It's a very beautiful movie. It's a very, it's, I think it's the best Jesus movie as a matter of fact, and I'll tell you why. Because most Jesus movies, they get a little hammy, they get a little overproduced, in my opinion. And here's a Jesus movie where the music is very subtle. We'll get to the music a little later, I have other things to say about the music, but for the most part, the music is subtle enough. Shots linger on people. It's a very slower Jesus movie. And that's how a Jesus movie, in my opinion, should feel. When Jesus is talking, um, he shouldn't be very expressive. He should be very stoic in film terms anyway. I don't know about the real person. But you, this movie, you kind of feel the presence of a Holy Spirit just by the way the film is shot and just by the way characters react. Jesus doesn't have to say much in order to capture people's attention which is quite distant from a movie like The Last Temptation of Christ, which I thought Willem Dafoe's performance was a little too loud and very expressive, which worked for that movie for different reasons, but I'm just talking about overall Jesus movies. So yeah, I thought that was really interesting, beautifully shot, and Jesus just looks like a normal person in this movie. He doesn't have like the blue eyes and the long hair and the beard. He kind of just looks like a normal person. He looks a little even rugged, I would say. He has a bit of a monobrow. Usually in a Jesus movie, they're trying to gonna look, make him look as perfect as possible. That's not the case here. He just looks like a normal person, which added to the relatability of Jesus in this film. As for the music, there's some choices of music that were a little strange to me. They were playing like Blind Willie Johnson at some point in this movie, which uh, I didn't really, I thought that came out of the left field a little bit. But overall, I think this is the best Jesus movie. And if they wanted to make another Jesus movie, they should use this one as a template, I would say. Feels very naturalistic, very matter of fact, very beautiful. 
very organic in its presentation. Finally, I watched the Andromeda Strain. I figured because lockdowns are over, in America anyway, uh, we can celebrate by watching a movie about a deadly virus. So basically, the Andromeda Strain is about this alien virus that comes to Earth so we think, and a team is assembled to try to figure out what are the weaknesses of this virus. Different people from different fields coming together, using their expertise to decode this virus. And it's a very science accurate movie, I would say. I study pharmacy, and there's a part in this movie where they find out that the virus is weaker in alkaline environments compared to acidic environments. So the character proceeds to hyperventilate, because carbon dioxide is acidic and you're exhaling carbon dioxide, hence making your blood more basic. You can never see that in a movie these days. Imagine you're watching Spider-Man No Way Home and the solution to everyone's problem is to hyperventilate to make your blood more alkaline. It's a very scientific conclusion to a movie. I was watching this movie, I was like, fuck! If only we handled COVID the way they handled this pandemic, you know? There's like a bunker that goes like five stories down and every time you go down a story you have to like disinfect yourself in a different manner and it felt like a very scientific movie and that's kind of what I miss about old sci-fi. They weren't afraid to go out full out nerdy, you know? Like look at Star Trek and the Next Generation and the original series in Deep Space Nine. They weren't afraid to be nerdy. Like sometimes the solution to everyone's problems was something completely nerdy but that's what sci-fi used to be. It used to be a genre for nerds. And somehow sci-fi merged with Star Wars, which is more fantasy, and all sci-fi became more fantasy. But this is like good old traditional uh, homemade apple pie science fiction movie. And I enjoyed it quite a bit for what it is. It's a little dated. I'm not gonna deny it. It's very dated in its presentation. So it might not resonate with the average viewer in 2022. That said, I feel like I needed this kind of movie, just like a smart science fiction movie. So I, I gave it a shot. I enjoyed it quite a bit as well. Guys, what movies have you seen this week? I want to hear about it. Comment below what movies have you seen this week. We can start a discussion.